All right, so you've made it almost to the finish line. We are now talking about the last part of the machine project or the last step for MP3. So here, really what we're doing is we're taking data that you've already computed, assuming you finished the first two checkpoints, which you should do first because you really can't finish this until you have the results from those. And we're gonna display that information to the user. That's our goal. Um, now, you know, this checkpoint is not a lot of imperative work, but there are some integration challenges here. So I just wanna talk a little bit about what needs to happen. So let's, let's work from the, from the starting point. So you've got this related restaurants class. And if you are here and you've passed the first two test cases, you've got correct implementations of the methods that you need to call. You've got get related in order, which gives you the list. You're gonna take the first item from that list. You've got get connected to, which gives you a size, and you're gonna take the so a set, excuse me, and you take the size of that set. So you have the data you need. The goal, the, the challenge here is really just sort of figuring out how to get access to it in your restaurant activity. So I suspect that your restaurant activity, I'm not gonna show you this because it has some solution code in it, already has access to an instance of the client. So you've already been making calls using the client because that's how you translated that restaurant ID that you were passed into more information about the restaurant. So essentially we want to extend this idea and what we want to happen is we want the client, we're going to add some methods on the client that allow us to make the appropriate calls to the related restaurant object. However, we have not yet created the related restaurant object. And in order to do that, we also need a list of preferences. Somebody sort of pointed out earlier, like, we never call get preferences anywhere. Ah, here we go. We're going to need to. So in the main activity, you'll notice that we do call get restaurants, but we don't call get preferences anywhere. And so you are going to need to call get preferences so that the client has both a list of restaurants and a list of preferences. Now, once you have both of those pieces of information, you need to create this related restaurant object using the constructor, and then you can call the methods to obtain the data correctly in your restaurant activity. Now, there's another tricky little bit here, which is the order in which these two pieces of data are retrieved. So you can't create your related restaurant object until you have both a list of restaurants and a list of preferences. So both the call to get restaurants has to complete and the call to get preferences has to, has to complete. If you make those two calls sort of simultaneously, it's not clear which one will win. But there's a different approach here, which is what I would suggest, which is make sure that the call to get restaurants completes first and then make the call to get preferences. One thing I'll point out is when we test your code, you'll notice that we always start the main activity first, even if what we're examining is the view produced by a particular restaurant activity. So you can always assume that the onCreate method of your main activity will be called during testing. So that's a good place to make both those calls. You want to get the list of restaurants, you want to get the list of preferences. Once you have both, you're going to combine them together to get that related restaurant object. You need to save it somewhere on the client so that you can get at it and then add a few methods to access that information so that you can call them in your restaurant activity. Once you've done that, you're almost done. You just have to add a couple of text views to the layout so that you can display the information and then display it properly. One thing to keep in mind, not every restaurant has any related restaurants. If the list of related restaurants is empty, you should not show anything. Just leave that blank. You don't want to display null or something weird. Just, you know, use a blank string. Um, also be careful because if you call get uh, zero on an empty list, what's going to happen, or if you try to use index zero on, a, on an empty list in Kotlin, you're going to get a, an exception because that isn't a valid index. So, you know, again, most of the challenges here are just getting the information to your restaurant activity. You have the calls already done, assuming you're passing the earlier test cases. Now your goal is just make sure that the restaurant activity can access that information so it can display it to the user. Once you do that, you are finished with this semester's machine project. Congratulations. As always, when and if you need help, we're available on the forum, on the help site, um, and you know we'll, we'll help get you to the finish line. Good luck.